Thanks everyone for allowing me to share my story. I'm uh, Rob Amos, Senior Director of Shop Floor Applications at GE Aviation. Uh, currently, GE Aviation is uh, the largest commercial uh, manufacturer of jet engines uh, in the world. We, can, we have approximately 80% of the commercial market and about 25 to 30% of the military market, and that's growing rapidly. But every day uh, prior to COVID, every two seconds, an aircraft took off around the world being powered by GE Aviation jet engines. We're facing a big challenge today, and currently we have over 50 manufacturing and assembly shops around the world. We have them in various states, and we are facing many challenges to be able to um, produce the engines at an, in an efficient manner and at a cost-efficient manner. Our current situation is we are facing many obsolete systems. Um, the first one you can see on the screen, the lady that's in the picture right there is working on a homegrown um, application that was developed in-house 25, 30 years ago by two brothers within GE Aviation, literally a green screen application. That is running 11 of our core component shops. That's the core MES system for those shops. Uh, we currently also have multiple point solution systems behind the scenes, not just the MES system, but a lot of homegrown applications. Uh, and we have zero machine connectivity. We have uh, in our core common component shops. We also have the inability to, to analyze end-to-end -end manufacturing data, data sets because of all the disparate systems. Factoring all those things in together, we are on the path to uh, modernize our supply chain DT infrastructure and bring it up to a modern data point that will allow us to grow the business, get back on track post-COVID, and still be able to report on the nth degree of detail that we want to get out of and be able to analyze all of the data that we're getting. The obsolete systems are, are causing a lot of duplicate redundant systems because they are so um, misused. Because they are so old, the manufacturing plants are finding ways to circumvent them. They are going out and, and uh, creating their own, like I said, point solutions within the uh, shops that are you know, causing the data then to be in so many disparate systems that we can't uh, figure out what's really going on on the shop floor. And we currently also don't have an ERP uh, on the back end of some of our core manufacturing shops. We're in the process of putting in the ERP, but for today, really we want to focus on getting rid of our um, antiquated systems and being able to put in a, a new modern MES system that will allow us to uh, connect the machines to the human uh, labor and be able to make end-to-end -end decisions on how, how best the quality was, how fast the product was manufactured, um, and, and be able to report accurately as to what was done on the shop floor so we can get accurate planning and data out of everything that we're doing. So as you can tell, our challenge is great. Enabling world-class manufacturing processes in aviation powered by a new manufacturing execution system. That execution system is Plan Apps. We are partnered with GE Digital to develop the next generation MES solution um, with these goals in mind. Reduce the number of applications on the shop floor. We really want to get that down so that the hourly employee on the shop floor does not have to go back and forth between various systems. We want one system to be able to handle end to end on the shop floor. We want less confusion with the employees. We want to know where the data is and we want to be able to track that from end to end so that we can improve and uh, uh, increase the efficiency on the shop floor. Like I said in the second bullet, which is maximize efficiency on the shop floor is exactly that. With one system, we will be able to do that. And then the most critical part of this, we you know, obviously being an FAA uh, Department of Defense, uh, Department of Military or MOD over in the UK, we have to report out a lot to the, uh, whether it's the US federal government or the English government, we have to be able to track and build our engines to the uh, ability to know where the product came from, what serial number was put on the engine, be able to finish up. And when that final bolt is put on the engine, we want to have that engine book to be able to say, I can track the beginning and end of this uh, product or of the engine from the day from inception of some of the parts, whether they were manufactured within some of our component manufacturing plants or whether they came from an outside vendor, what order they were put on the parts, those parts were put on the engine, and then where that engine shipped to, to testing, and then honestly, at the end, to the customer. 
So we really need to be able to get the genealogy out of this uh, to build that engine book for the life cycle of the engine. You know, the back end of that is we want to be able to take that engine book when an engine comes back into our shops for repair and overhaul. We want to be able to pull out that uh, book and say, these are all the parts that went on that engine. It better still be there. What, how to replace it? What do we have any known issues with those parts? And still continue to track that uh, engine through the life cycle as it goes through from repair over and um, repair and overhaul to the lighter stages of its life. So really, we have some key goals here and simplify the environment, get as much efficiency out of the shop floor and build the autobiography of that engine and be able to report on it and track it to the final point and final destination. Um, why we chose Plan Apps 8.1, what it brings to the table. First of all, it's a multimodal platform. It just makes complete sense. We, we had discrete shops, we had some process shops, we have complex assembly. We have a multitude of ways we need to be able to use those plan applications within our manufacturing plants. Currently, we produce some fiber that's a, a, like a, a thread, and we put, produce that down in our Huntsville plant. And that uh, you know, is more of a process or flow manufacturing. We obviously produce component parts where it's more of a discrete manufacturing. We get a lot of data off the machines for both those um, modes of manufacturing. When we go to the, the um, complex assembly end, we want to be able to do, pull that same data from those uh, machines as well. So the multimodal platform really gives us the capability to be able to service all of our manufacturing plants, get them up on the same platform, reduce the number of systems, and be able to uh, handle the, the mixed manufacturing environment with one system. The second reason is the machine connectivity. We've never been able to connect what happens on our machines with the human activity that's happening on the shop floor. This is the first system that we came across that actually allowed you to do that. We have been calculating optimal equipment efficiency or OEE reporting for several years. It's always been reported the same way. It's, you know, it's quality times throughput times human uh, activity on that machine. And what ha would happen is we would have to guesstimate two of those three metrics. We would know how much throughput went through, but we would never know the, hu the human aspect or the quality aspect of it. And we would never know the, uh, the machine aspect of it. Plan applications is the first system that allows us to link up all of that data and give a first time true accurate picture of OEE. And that's out of the box capability right now. No longer guesstimating what's put on a spreadsheet and what's um, going to be, you know, in this, uh, in the quality aspect, you know, how many pieces uh, were there and how many pieces failed versus how many pieces were good. That amount had always been peanut buttered across in the past and we weren't really uh, able to get a good reading and let alone down to the cell or machine level on the shop floor. Plan applications allows us to get that machine connectivity down to the individual machine, that cell, the working cell, the hourly worker who's either causing a problem or is a great performer, you know, we're able to get all of that out of there. Then operations hub, and I'll touch on more of this in the end, but the ops hub, the container that's allowing us to get rid of a lot of our point solutions that were created on the shop floor to measure different things, whether it was uptime or being able to pull in some quality data so that the manager in the cell can be able to see uh, the quality data that's coming off the line so that you can know real time whether there's a problem or not. Ops Hub allows us to do that, and we're starting to implement that in our Evendale site and be able to uh, increase the efficiency and, uh, and operations capability of the shop floor by putting more data on the screen for the hourly and the managers to be able to make real-time decisions versus having to wait for reports the next day. Ops Hub does that real-time. And then just the, the, the moving to AWS and, and the reduction in overall ownership. Um, you know, we, we put a lot of money into our data centers over the years, and we've been spending the last uh, three, four years trying to get out of those data centers. And the AWS capability of plan applications uh, really allows us to be able to move to a modern platform and be able to uh, keep downtime to a minimum uh, combined with the Docker capability of plan applications. It's improving the uh, speed at which we can do an upgrade 
and be able to uh, restore in the case of a, a failure if one of the systems did go down completely. The ability to go to AWS has been huge, just from a cost savings standpoint, downtime standpoint, and, and failover standpoint. It's really allowed us to um, take the game to the next level when it comes to uh, why we chose playing applications and, and why we're moving there. So you kind of get a picture on this slide of our journey. Uh, we started in Evendale, Ohio, in what we call our Lean Labs. We were the first to implement Plan Apps version 8.0. Uh, we did that when it first came out, um, I think it was September, October of last year. We've been up on Plan Apps 8.0 uh, since then. It was actually just upgraded this past Friday. Um, I'm doing this presentation on a Monday in uh, September. We just upgraded to 8.1 um, in the Lean Labs uh, this past Friday. So we are expanding the use of Plan Apps in the Lean Labs and um, the new 8.1 will bring a lot of productivity and a lot of um, enhancements that will allow us to expand that out to uh, our series of lean labs. Currently, we have it running in one lean lab, but there's about nine lean labs uh, that all they do all day long is test product to send out to the main manufacturing shops and be able to build production capable parts. Uh, they test all day long, test how to build it, how to best build it, how, what's the most efficient way to build it, and then send it out to the manufacturing plants. So we were able to get them on, a, on the same uh, manufacturing system that the production plants will be using. Then in 2020, later this year, we'll be going live in two of our full production plants. Uh, the first is our Huntsville plant, which is, is going to go live hopefully next month, uh, October 1st. In just a week or so, they are going to go live on Plan Apps 8.1, and that will be a full production plant. They are a more of a process or flow manufacturing plant. Um, it produces spools of car, uh, ceramic matrix composite fiber that goes to coat our uh, aviation, uh, the turbine fan blades in the engine to make them stronger. Literally think of it like uh, uh, armor going around the fan blade. It uh, It's produced and, and it's put into a mesh format and then placed around the fan blade to uh, incre increase the resiliency and strength of that fan blade. That plant's opening up uh, for testing, uh, like I said, October 1st. So that site will be going live on Plan Apps 8.1 uh, then. And then our second site that's going live is Prague. And the first thing they're doing is actually just full OEE deployment. And that deployment is going to be um, in November of this year. Uh, we have several machines already lined up in uh, what's not a live environment, but it's the prod environment. And they'll be deploying uh, OEE to those machines. And I'll show you a picture of that in a second. The other big thing with our Prague is it's going to be the first site where we actually have, uh, well, both Huntsville and Prague. They'll be the first sites where we're deploying uh, Oracle integrations to our ERP. So we're running an Oracle R12 um, ERP bookend uh, that... Uh, sends demand down to the shop floor and takes the finished goods then back after it's done uh, working its way through the WIP process and the MES system is done with it. Uh, the Oracle integrations have been tested and we have a, uh, several of them up and ready to run. And we'll be sending things like the item master, the work order and, and several other down to, um, to the plan app system and be able to, uh, you know, get the real time uh, data back from the shop floor or to the, to the MES system and back up uh, to the Oracle ERP system. So I believe we're the first ones to do that as well. And it's been uh, working great so far. And then 21, 2021 and 2022 are really where we're looking to make big strides. And these, this is what we've been building for. The first several sites, you know, Lean Labs, Huntsville and Prague, those are what we considered where we were doing a lot of our testing, spending, we really didn't put deadlines on ourselves because we had a lot of work to do to get um, plan applications up and running. But 2021 is going to bring with it a whole nother level of, um, of complexity. We'll be looking to get into our component shops that I spoke about, the green screen application. The first thing we'll be doing in 2021 is removing the uh, route creation and work authoring of work instruction systems that are currently in place. Um, and those will be replaced by one MES and uh, team center on the work authoring of work instruction side. One MES will be creating the routes. That will be the first step. That will move quickly into the second step, which will be to replace the, uh, the, uh, the actual green screen MES system from, uh, from the plants. 
and we'll be looking to do that uh, probably in early 2022. We'll get through all the uh, authoring of the work instructions and the route creation in 2021, and then we'll look to replace the green screen MES system in early 2022. As most of you probably know, you don't just go in and rip out a manufacturing execution system. It requires a long, thorough planning process, and that's what we're starting up now with the remove with the um, with the Plan Apps 8.2 uh, system. So we're really uh, starting to hit the heart of our problem and starting to focus on the main um, the core manufacturing shops that we need to replace. Simultaneous to that, we're also going into some of our existing other existing shops. We actually have a bigger problem than I let on. We have actually five MES systems in our environment, and our goal is to get rid of all five. And so we are laying the groundwork with everything we have done so far to start to replace those other MES systems and be able to get those uh, systems removed simultaneously to the core engines initiative. And we'll be starting that initiative in 2021 as well. And then 2022 and beyond really brings uh, the final leg of this project to fruition which is the core assembly shops, complex assembly, actually building the jet engine. Uh, we have a, currently we run the CAMS uh, SAP system, which as some of you may know is uh, a uh, system that they have end of life. And uh, we have got to upgrade and get out of CAMS because of it is end of life and we need to get to a new modern platform. Um, unfortunately, we can't tackle everything at once. So we chose the core engine shops first the complex assembly second. Obviously the green screen older application screamed a lot more pain points than the uh, SAP application, which had only been in place since 20, 2007. So only 13 years compared to the 2530 of the other one. But 2022 will bring about that change. And uh, we're, we really look forward to that and helping GE Digital plan for a complex assembly. Obviously it brings about its own challenges that uh, the, uh, the core engines, uh, discrete manufacturing shops don't and requires a lot more uh, functionality within it. So we'll, we, like I said, we're looking to partner with GED to, to help develop that uh, capability over the next coming years and be able to start to really uh, tackle our last leg there um, and be able to, to get rid of the CAMS system. So like I spoke about, um, here's an example of what we have set up in our pride environment right now in the Czech Republic. Um, we want to calculate OEE. It's the first thing that's going live uh, next month. And uh, this is one of the screens off one of the machines that we just set up. You can see the, the uh, OEE 75%, little below industry standard, but I think this is going to be the first time that this plant uh, ever had the ability well, it's definitely the first time any plant within our system had the ability to calculate real-time OEE out of the box. Um, but we're really going to focus on getting those machines set up and building the hierarchy within the manufacturing plant to be able to say, yes, this is good OEE, no, you know, getting the quality data in there, getting everything in there, and being able to start to uh, improve the manufacturing shop floor. And OEE will be a great first step as we spread this across all of our manufacturing shops. The next is the ops hub, like I spoke about. The ability to get real-time data in front of the operators or the managers on the shop floor rather than having to pull from multiple systems. Uh, being able to design your own uh, point solutions within an existing uh, app that we want to keep for a very long time versus going out and developing a whole new application to just be able to say, is, is that machine up? And is, is, is it up in this cell or X cell? You know, we're gonna, we have that capability and we're starting to lay out the data so that the operators on the shop floor can be able to make decisions in real time and uh, greatly improve their efficiency in the same system that they're working in all day long instead of going over to several other point solutions. But in the end, we're building towards the future. You know, our, as you can see, we're putting in the one MES system on top of an Oracle ERP and with a new quality roadmap. Obviously the quality for the most part is built into the one MES system. It's on, um, it's got all the non-conformance stuff in there and really replaces several other quality applications uh, that, uh, that are running on the shop floor. So again, the end users don't have to go into uh, many systems. The uh, common shop floor application is the 25 year old green screen application. We're looking to get rid of that. Tip QA is our quality application, get rid of that. Interax is that as our, uh, route creation uh, system, and we're looking to get rid of that. 
Bottom line, simplified environment, scalable architecture, the ability to replicate this same roadmap throughout all plus 50 plus percent of our, or 50 plus of our shops. Um, we have our priorities first on the 13 existing sites that we want immediately, but being able to replicate this will greatly save, um, you know, how many uh, dollars we can save based upon the number of systems we can get rid of and simplify this down into one system and be able to replicate it across all our plants will greatly enhance uh, the, the productivity on the shop floor as well as reducing our footprint of apps, our dollar cost in, in software maintenance to various uh, software companies, our support teams, our server cost, everything that's going in there. Um, our goal is to get that down and have one MES be the backbone of that future uh, supporting that Oracle uh, R12 ERP and um, have that roadmap uh, going forward. Hopefully you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you very much.